All right. Wow, that game left me a little bit speechless. But uh, here is our Protoss player winning the last game with an amazing play, even busting out carriers. And looks like he's going to be Forge expanding again, probably. <laughs> what can the, the, that's the I can toilet. brown do for you? <laughs> Sup, brute lords? The <laughs> That's the uh, best Archon Toilet I've seen that, in a while. That Archon Toilet was awesome. And the Zerg player who hates that move, he's starting in the blue colors. He is none other than the one and only. I'm no I love when Zerg players spawn on that position on the on this map because then the little Larva, uh, not the lava, lava animations like bubble up around their hatchery. It looks all cool. In my last game, I thought a little bit about what Luzira could do when uh, before that fight actually started. And uh, he had a really good composition with all those brute lords. He had like 18 of them. A uh, huge amount of corruptors as well. Yeah. But one upgrade that I would really, I wasn't sure if he could actually pull that off, but I would have liked him to try to get that neural parasite. He had oh, a yeah, bunch yeah. of that would have been, been nice. He had a bunch of infestors. There were colossi in That's the mix really of his opponent's army as well as Templars. So that might have completely failed with a good feedback or with a good focus with those corruptors. Uh, sorry, not corruptors, but colossi. But it would have been worth the try, in, uh, in, a, in my opinion. He should. He could just. He had the resources. Why not just get it and give it a go? Oh yeah, that's true. I mean, it might be completely useless. M maybe Brown is on top of his game, sees that that uh, in uh, sorry that infester and goes for the feedback straight away or tries to focus it down. But even if he's able to just neural parasite the mothership for only a couple of seconds, that will give yeah. him an edge in that fight. And uh, yeah, I was that was that was one yeah, thing no. that would have loved to see. That would have been pretty cool. I mean, neural parasite the uh, the mothership and maybe even use it to cast Vortex on his own army or something like that. I remember once I actually casted a game, um, and this isn't a completely unique tactic, it's been used a few times, but I casted a game on YouTube once with Dark Force, actually, versus uh, Braddock, I believe it was, and he actually, in the middle of a battle, Neural Parasited an enemy ghost and used it to EMP all of his other ghosts, so he couldn't EMP his other infestors. It was beautiful. <laughs> So, a clutch Neural Parasite on a key unit could definitely be uh, a good thing to have, especially, I mean, he had he was maxed, he had tons of money, there's no reason not to research that with Colossus and everything in the, in the battle. And Brown was, <clears throat> he's go, he was going for the macro game, he was actually confident enough that he thought he could pull that off against Lucira, and I didn't and I still don't really like the choice of being passive for such a huge amount of time. He won that game after all, so he definitely wasn't in a position to decide that game in yeah, his no, favor. Yeah, no, you're right. But I, I, I don't I'm know. I don't feel comfortable just looking at that because I feel like the Zerg player has so much options and has so much stuff that he can do. Luzira had the perfect army and he was killed by that Vortex, but I'm not... I'm really not sure. Brown might be the player who's able to pull something like off, uh, like that off a second time when he's going for it. But now he's starting to get a really <laughs> early plus one attack. So a <laughs> little bit more aggression by the Protoss this time. Zergs used to and probably still do complain about Protosses who just sit on two bases and max, max out. Brown's, Brown's the Protoss that sits, that turtles off five bases and max out. Well, if you turtle on two bases as a Protoss player, you will lose the game. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, at this level, definitely. Yeah, that's, uh, that's just, the oh. Zerg player will take the map, the Zerg player will be in the, in, uh, the position to uh, max out his army, even if he loses his army. And two bases for a Protoss player don't allow him to get all the tech structures that he really needs. And, well, Brown surprised me, though, pulling that off in the fight. I mentioned that in the last game. If he really wants to rely on a play like that, he needs to have the perfect micro in the main fight, and he had that. He went for that micro play and he put down the storms, the vortex, everything that he needed. So yeah, he pulled it off, and Luzira is is down one game. He needs to take this win now if he wants to face uh, to force a third game, and that might prove to be hard against a player like uh, Brown, who's going now for the Void Ray once again and a couple of gateways. He might actually just go for the Void Ray in combination with the Zealots and plus one attack. Interesting. But we have Roaches, yeah. so... 
Yeah, well, you know, he didn't... Uh, this is pretty much the similar build to what he did last game, is what it's seeming like There it here. is. Wop in pilot for the Zealots. And yeah, you're right. Last game, he kind of put on a little bit of pressure with the Void Ray and the Phoenix, but didn't really pressure much after that until oh he God. got a large army. Did he miss that? Uh, no, he, no, saw, he it. saw the pilot. Yeah. But yeah, we might see Brown do a little bit more pressure this time. He's going to try and catch that. Pylon, is he going to get it? Oh, the Zealots want to say no. Oh, and he does cancel the next round of Zealots warping in. This pressure has been thwarted. A new Pylon is warping in, but it's going to be too late for that's those not, Zealots. That's not going to work. Luzira has Roaches. He's building additional ones. He has the speed. That won't work. Even though he has the plus one attack upgrade, Luzira is too safe against something like that. Now, he does have the Void Ray, though, to deal with those Roaches, and he's oh, actually going to trap but the, the Roaches. roaches. Oh, completely out of position. Ugh. Two go down. He is going to get out of the way, but one of them is near death as well. He is actually in danger of losing this third base. The queens are targeting down the void rays, but the zealots are targeting down the queens. One queen goes down, and the second queen is forced away by the zealots. This void ray is just going to have a heyday. Can do whatever it wants right now. He wasn't allowed to lose those initial roaches. That was a huge blunder by Luzio. He's throwing away way too many in the early stages when every single roach counts and he gets punished for it right now. Brown sees his chance even though it looked like Luzio was able to defend against that with that huge slip up with the army movement. He is just about to lose that third base and maybe even the game another round of units being warped in and two, two void rays taking out every single roach combination with the zealots. That's horrible for Luzio. Wow, he's got so many zealots on the ground. The queens cannot handle this. And uh, wow. the Void Ray is just doing so much damage to his roaches. He is probably going to lose this third base. I don't see how he can save it. He doesn't have any more queens in production right now. Now he just made two. But uh, he just doesn't have an answer for this. And finally clears out the Zealots, but he's got nothing for those Void Rays. And he already lost nine workers. He is so far behind in workers right now. 50 workers for Brown and only like 38 for Luzira. And even the pilot <laughs> in the main base, he's getting... Oh, oh wow. Look at Brown going at him. He has those void base. And I can't believe that Lucira screwed that up. He saw the pilot. He killed the initial oh, pilot. Oh, he has a counter attack. Well, I thought he might attack. be able to get some links into the main. A lot of links getting into the main. And Brown actually doesn't have anything here. He's going to have to warp in some units here. But Brown might lose his main nexus at the same time. He's defending with the probes, though. At the same time, we have the we have the first void ray being killed. Finally, in the main base, a bunch of zerglings left to deal with the probes, but not too many of them. And there are zerglings. The plus one armor upgrade is not done. Is not done for the zerg. Still plus one attack for the zealots. Therefore, two hitting zerglings, and the second queen dies. GG. Lucira with a huge slip up in the early game is losing that match and Brown, wow, Brown taking down Luzira with 2-0, <laughs> he's just happy and as Slayer's wow. Brown and Slayer's Sella giving him a big hug, a congratulatory hug because Slayer's Brown has just in his Code A debut made it into Code S and I'm really disappointed by Luzira. Done. Luzira, ah, I, I can't get my head around that. He saw the pilot, he killed the first one, delayed the push a little bit longer, he knew about the plus one attack upgrade, he went for the roaches just in time. He knew he needed roaches and he had them. Yeah. He had everything he needed to defend against that attack and suddenly he's just sacrificing four of his roaches, walking the wrong way, straight into that zealots. And the, to well, those get four roaches losing I, them. I don't know if he... I don't know if he expected that Void Ray to be there. I, I mean, I don't know if he even scouted the, the Stargate at that point. Uh, he didn't have Overlords. He didn't He didn't go after the Overlords first as kind of a pressure move. He went straight for that third base that's, this time. That's so a common strategy for, for Protoss. So that's something that you have to deal with in ladder countless times. And when he scout, even without scouting the Void Ray, he had the, the Queens to take down the Void Rays. But he lost all of his Roaches. Then, then the Zealots didn't have anything at the ground they had to deal with. There was just nothing to protect the Queens. That was the main issue. If you are able to protect the Queens, the Queens will be able to take out the Void Rays. And, uh, well, you can just kite the Zealots. It doesn't really matter. But when he lost yeah. the first four and uh, Brown mo warped in the second round of Zealots, it was yeah. just too much stuff. Well, I mean, normally it's kind of a funny thing where you would think that, okay, well... 
He might have thought it was just a pressure build and it wasn't a big attack because Brown likes to play macro and that kind of thing. But then he saw the pylon. So he knew he knew that he was going to try and warp in units forward. He's, so he should have tipped him off. Okay, this is an attack. Maybe after he killed the pylon, he's like, okay, well, I've stopped this. I'm, I'm safe now. But uh, I don't know. It just seemed to catch him off guard a little bit. He didn't quite have enough units on the ground yet. And you know what? Isn't that really the trouble of Zerg is, you know, you get caught making a little bit too many drones when you need a little bit more units and you don't aren't aware of that and he actually didn't, didn't have quite, a, quite enough roaches out in time. Basically, well, I'll put it down to those four roaches that he lost. He, uh, because Brown even had more workers than, uh, um, than Lucera. And what I liked about Brown, by the way, um, I don't want to only um, go on about how Lucera oh, yeah. actually lost that game. What I liked Brown about Brown played is that beautifully. He didn't only have that one pylon down there, he had another one at the second base. Um, he didn't uh, need it and he didn't actually warp in units, at least not to my knowledge, but there was a second pylon that enabled him to uh, just get pressure from two sides. He saw his chance of killing Luzira right away, so he didn't use it. And uh, when he built that pylon in the main base of Luzira, uh, that was kind of cheeky. And I really liked <laughs> about the kid. No respect at all, just going for it like, well, okay, I got the chance, hey, there's no creep go there. You gotta build it where there's no creep, yeah. and the rest of his base was full of creep, so you know, you gotta do what you can so uh, and again just a reminder Lucera is not completely out of the running yet he is going down to the up and down matches which are going to be actually uh, not next week but the following week next week is the Blizzard Cup and then the following week the week before Christmas is going to be the up and down matches so he will have another chance he'll be in a group of five players if I remember correctly and two of them get out so he still has a, an okay chance of getting into Codas but Brown is definitely going to be in Codas next season Let's check out the results for today. Brown and Parting. Brown and Parting. Two players. Most of uh, the guy, uh, the people who voted at GOMTV.net didn't expect true, that. True, true. Brown taking down Luzier with 2-0. Parting winning against Killer with 2-1. We will see both of them in Kodas next season. It's kind of exciting. It's really, really yeah. nice. Kind of a hero story right there. And the underdog taking down the accomplished player. And that's why we have this new format is to allow for a little bit more uh, dynamic movement between Kodas and Code A, up and down, and so you can get players like that going up pretty easily. And here's the matches for tomorrow. ASD versus Nesty, that's going to be great. July versus Finn, aka 4GG, that is going to be awesome too. Former Brood War champions duking it out here for a chance in Kodas. Lucky versus Ganji is going to be crazy as well because those guys are both so good. And Dongregu versus Tasia. Tomorrow's matches are going to be insane. Make sure you tune in tomorrow. Same bat time and channel. Tastosis are going to be in the house casting some Code A to see who gets into Code S from those eight amazing players. Tomorrow is going to be wicked. That's yeah. just going to be so great. I mean, that's not a single match that I, that I don't want to see. Especially... Yeah. I mean, Finn did so well in TBT. Oh, yeah. He actually has been playing really, really well. I want to see his game against Zerg. We have Lucky. Lucky was able to uh, beat Naniwa two times. Naniwa stating himself that he thinks that Lucky is one of the best Zergs in uh, Korea right now and one of the most underrated as well. He's able to uh, face Ganzi tomorrow, so this is going to be a great game. Well, and Don I mean, against Teja. I mean, Naniwa, he, he lost to Lucky. And the next week he flew over and beat Nesty. Yeah, exactly. You Two know, times. A couple times. So, <laughs> Lucky's got to be pretty good. Either that or he's... I'm not even going to make that joke. You all know what I was going to say. Uh, anyway, so that's going to do it for today, though. Make sure you tune in for those matches tomorrow. I am Moltrap. With me is Kaldor. We'll see you next time.